Good afternoon, folks. We are on track two here at Mayday Mayhem. My name is Ms. Communication, and I am joined by Bulldog. Hi there. Okay, sorry. We are <laughs> headed here into this next game. We are going to see the West Texas Roller Dolls face off against the ICT Roller Girls. Uh, this is actually uh, Pueblo. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, West Texas is, is ah, the They're other, on the other track. Okay, I'm going to swap my rosters and, uh, okay, Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls. I'm sorry, guys. And ICT. ICT Roller Girls. We are so organized. Let me tell you. Yeah, this is the ICT Roller Girls. If you're watching on your screen, the ICT is in the red jerseys. The Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls are in the black jerseys. There we go. I'm better now. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> All right. Your way to get it off on the right foot. We've got dog pile number 11 jamming for Kansas. Uh, yes, Kansas. ICT is actually Wichita, Kansas, the airport code. So if I say Kansas, I mean ICT. Pueblo is actually from Utah, obviously from Pueblo, <laughs> Utah. Pueblo, Colorado, my friend. Pueblo, Colorado. To the south of us, about three hours. Number 133, Ala in your, bi in your biz is the jammer for Pueblo, and she is lead. We've got Dogpile breaking free of the pack, but about half pack, half a lap behind Ala in your biz. Ala in your biz hitting the pack on a scoring pass and calls it off quickly. Only going to get about halfway through the pack. No points for ICT. Dogpile didn't get into the, penalty, into the pack. And I think we're uh, going to see only one point. One point for Pueblo. That's right, one point for Pueblo. They had that lead jammer status in the last jam. Great job by ICT's dog pile, putting on the pressure and forcing the call off. Next up on the line, we've got Billy Foul play for the ladies in black and a bomb run bit Brit for the ladies in red. Three wall holding back Billy Foul play. That's Scott Landa hit Pooter Smacker and Annika Soren slam. But Billy Foul play finds a way through the inside lane, gets lead jammer. Bomb run Britt at the back, bounces off a hip check from Harley Innocent, and then gets run over by Jamie Fox, who up. He knocks her out of bounds. She, pop, she comes back in quickly, but still has that four wall to deal with. Billy Foul play, the jammer for Pueblo in the black, up front. She's on a scoring pass now. Annika Soren slam falls down. That leaves only one on one. Scott Land to hit. Can't catch up. Billy foul play too, accelerates too fast out of the pack. Gets the grand slam. That puts Pueblo at six. Bomb run Brit, the jammer for ICT. Gets knocked out by, that is, Strawberry Sour, number 05 for Pueblo. As Billy foul play comes in on a second scoring pass. Again, all four ICT blockers crumble. They just open right up. They, I think they, they may have thought they had gone out of play, but they were still... Pretty close. Scott Landa hit was just dropping back to bridge, but Billy Foulplay nevertheless got a free pass. But they were only about five feet in front of the pack, so maybe it was a bad judgment, or maybe they saw a referee's hand go up. Nevertheless, that's ten points in this jam for Pueblo. Billy Foulplay now gets around Foxy Mahler for a third grand slam. Fifteen points in this jam, and bomb run. Britt now finally gets an opening up the inside, only to get caught at the front by Jamie Fox. You up and Strawberry Sour. But she squeezes by, gets out of the pack. That is only her initial pass, though. Billy Foulplay of Pueblo is on her fourth scoring pass. Now ramming into Annika Sorenslam. Dodges around. Foxy Muller completes the pass. Four more points. A 19-point jam for Pueblo brings them to 20 points. ICT still has yet to get on the board. Big lineup there for defense for Pueblo. Big Kapowski, uh, Jamie Fox, you up. And number zero, five, Strawberry Sour, of founding members of the Pueblo Derby Devil, Devil Dolls. And you can tell they've played in a pack together defensively and offensively for several years now. Uh, Pueblo actually founded in 2007 and joined the WFTDA in 2010. Their current WFTDA ranking is 150th. The ICT Roller Girls founded a year before Pueblo in 2006. Their current WFTDA ranking is 134. They joined around the same time. I believe actually they were the same class as uh, the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls, if I remember that email going out back in 2010, Bulldog. 
Right now we've got an official timeout. The time is at 26 minutes, 44 seconds. Pueblo at 20 points, ICT still at zero. We're uh, taking a break here to fish, fix the screen here on turn two. Um, we've had uh, intermittent scoreboard problems on this track uh, throughout the tournament. I'm not sure what exactly is going on over there, but I think Bill Gates may be to blame. <laughs> We've got a lot of folks in the audience, uh, sitting in the audience from FOCO and from the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls, uh, both close friends with the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls. Uh, these teams uh, all on the front range of Colorado play each other very frequently. Uh, the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls have actually um, participated in every single May Day Mayhem. And, uh, and so they've got lots of friends in the audience to uh, cheer them on and help them along their way in this game against ICT. And that's good news for Pueblo. Bad news for ICT, I think. Uh, but right now, Jackie O'Jaw lining up for ICT in the red against Frigid Hair, number T21 for Pueblo. Empty penalty box. So we are at full strength on both teams, and it looks like the scoreboard is back in action. Very exciting for all of us. <laughs> Both jammers running into a scrum start, but now it picks up the pace. Jackie O'Jaw around the outside. Oh, gets screened out by Harley Innocent. Has to recycle to the back of the pack. Frigidaire breaks free of the pack. She's lead jammer. And Jackie O'Jaw falling down, has to catch up the pack again. Seymour Skin going to the penalty box for ICT. So Pueblo now with a one blocker advantage as Jackie O'Jaw is cleared out once again by Harley Innocent, number 69 of Pueblo. But nice work by Rachel Rage screening across, getting Harley Innocent out of the way. And that opened the door for Jackie O'Jaw to complete her initial pass just ahead of Frigid Air, who's on her first scoring pass. She potentially might, though, that was. <laughs> Almost scary. I'm going to see a low block. That almost looked like Rachel Rage uh, when she they started to go down, and she actually lifted her feet up, and it looked like she leapt feet first into the lap of Frigid Air as it goes down. That was it was, it was a little bit of a fright, but she ended up landing on her bottom, which is good for everyone concerned, I think, because otherwise, if she had landed with those wheels, that could have seriously injured Frigid Air. But she gets a low block penalty, nevertheless. Uh, and of course, just a reminder. They can't hear me on the track. The ref, <laughs> no one can hear me, so I'm not. <laughs> so don't think I'm putting ideas in anyone's head or anything. Oh no, we 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 would never strive as announcers to put ideas in anyone's heads. Uh, another uh, quick uh, official timeout for the scoreboard woes. And speaking of woes, Bulldog, uh, ICT with a full blocker contingency in the penalty box right now. ICT hitting some uh, penalty trouble here early in the game. Hopefully they'll be able to clean that up as we all like to uh, discuss frequently the impact of the penalty box on the game. Yeah. Also about, about that, I think, I think if you watch the replay, I say, I'm pretty sure that it will be clear that it was a completely inadvertent uh, just positional thing and in fact Rachel Rage may have intentionally seen the situation <laughs> as she was falling down and intentionally leaned to her bottom and saved the situation on her own. You know what, uh, Bulldog, you actually bring something up there uh, by using the word intentionally. Um, I've had a lot of talks with people this weekend uh, with the gross mis misconduct, ejections and suspensions that we've seen uh, talking about intent. The officials do not take into account intent when it comes to a misconduct or a gross misconduct type of a situation. And I think there are a lot of confused people and hurt feelings out there when you get a, a suspension blow dealt out just because the gross misconduct situation was so serious that we need to make sure that a suspension happens for either a game or a day. And, and really, it doesn't mean that the uh, officials are saying, oh, gosh, I blame you, you did that. But uh, rather, the, the situation and what happened was so egregious that something needs to be done in order to correct that. So keep that uh, in mind as you are watching our games here this weekend, that intent does not come into play or should not come into play um, when a call is made. All right, but there, there is sometimes a social cost, but no, not an actual official cost uh, to intent or anyone's judgment thereof. Uh, but very good point, Ms. Communication. We've got Ringo Scar jamming for Pueblo. She batters her way to the front. 
past Pooter Smacker, Seymour Skins, and Beatrix Beatdown gets out. They were the only three blockers. Rachel Wright's still in the penalty box. Lead jammer goes to Ringo Scar and Dogpile, the ICT jammer, going to the box. Oh, forearm penalty. She heads up for a forearm penalty. You may have seen her double back. She was past the point of no return, and it looks like she was trying to ask the penalty box for a favor there, but they sent her back around the track, Bulldog. And now the notorious Rachel Rage we've been talking about comes back into the, into the play, but Ringo Scar gets through the ICT fence very easily. Ten points so far for the Pueblo Jammer. Third. I, go ahead. <laughs> Third scoring pass for Ringo Scar and gets around Rachel Rage. ICT in this power jam, trying to shut down the power jam, but uh, with Pueblo uh, building their wall at the back of the pack and allowing the sausage to get made, it's pretty easy for Ringo Scar uh, to just push that pack forward. Bulldog. Ringo Scar coming through again. It's going to be Dogpile coming out of her initial pass, but not even going to come close to getting into a scoring position. So uh, Ringo Scar puts 19 on the board, bringing Pueblo to 43. And ICT still looking for a breath of oxygen. ICT uh, running into some penalty trouble, but I did notice that Dogpile in that last jam kind of holding off after she got out of the box. We've had several heartbreaks here at Mayday Mayhem, uh, multiple penalties for a jammer in, in consequential jams. And I think Dogpile was kind of holding back in that last jam to uh, avoid drilling any sort of a penalty, drawing any sort of a penalty call on her self. All right, the jam called dead as the scoreboard once again. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties on this track. Scoreboard uh, zoned out briefly, but they got it back quickly, but not in time for the jam. So they're going to have to reset the clock. And score remains 43 to 0 I'm while pretty, we reset. I'm pretty sure that this has to do with Windows no longer supporting XP. <laughs> Yeah. Pueblo, Pueblo right now with a blocker in their penalty box. Uh, they will start this jam uh, uh, down one blocker in, in the pack. ICT with a full complement of blockers right now. And we're waiting once again. At least it hasn't been a blue screen of death. <laughs> Not just yet. <laughs> you say that now, but no, oh, anything could happen. So, uh, ICT, this is their first Mayday Mayhem participation, and also this is their first full-sanctioned tournament ever in their uh, history as a league. But since becoming a full member of the WFTDA, ICT has also pr participated in Midwest Derby Fest 2013, and they came out fourth out of the 15 competing teams. That was a regulation tournament, uh, not a sanctioned one. And, and really, uh, what, I've what I've seen here this weekend is uh, it's, it's interesting that ICT was actually uh, ranked first in their pool uh, coming into this tournament. And I'm not sure if maybe uh, that, that was based on their record, their ranking in the WFTDA. And I'm not sure if maybe they haven't seen uh, much uh, positive play this year or maybe this is a rebuilding year for them. Presently, right now, they're sitting at a 2-4 and four record in sanctioned play. Um, with a couple of wins against the 580 Roller Girls and the Springfields. I don't know, Springfield. That's a team in Springfield. <laughs> um, uh, most recently on May 3rd. Uh, but uh, some blows dealt to them by Oklahoma City, Des Moines, and uh, Quad, Quad City and Omaha. Uh, so it, looks, it appears to me from looking at their roster of schedules this year, they've set up a pretty tough schedule for themselves as far as playing people who are ranked higher than them, according to the WFTDA. So, of course, then uh, coming to the Mayday Mayhem Tournament is a great place for a Division Three uh, teams to learn how to play at a tournament, at a multiple-day tournament that is sanctioned, and, uh, and learn from that. And we've seen ICT kind of adapt themselves uh, throughout their games, um, and unfortunately uh, falling short uh, but, you know, uh, we can turn the beat around at any time, as Gloria Stefan reminds us in her <laughs> 80s song. Well, we are seeing a glimmer of hope. The scoreboard seems to be back up, although the time is still wrong. So they'll have to update the time, but uh, I can see it. It's there. Oh, you can see it, too, on your screen right now. Let's Indeed, we're gonna look at this, <laughs> looking at the scoreboard. Well, we're, we're still waiting for them to update the time. Ah, uh, yes, time stuck at 30 minutes up on the scoreboard. 
And oh, hey, and it just magically fixed itself down to 23 minutes, just fancy. a little it's under like 24 minutes. Seven minutes just <laughs> happened, like in three seconds on the board. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it could be a function on the scoreboard, but right now, bomb run Brit of ICT breaks free first for lead jammer. So, this is a scoring opportunity for ICT to break their uh, their zero to get onto the scoreboard. A la Inya Biz, the jammer for Pueblo, dodging back and forth, but Pooter Smacker knocks her to the inside as bomb run Brit of ICT gets through, and they are on the board with a grand slam. Pooter Smacker going to the penalty box. I believe that was a back block penalty. Or was it, yeah, cutting the track on Ala Inya Biz. So a huge opportunity for ICT. Bomb run Brit on her second scoring pass. Falls down behind the big Kapowski and opts to call off the jam. She's going to get two more points for that second scoring pass. And then we're going to reset with a power start for ICT. Power start for ICT. Uh, none of the seconds of uh, Alia Nubiz's penalty uh, served in that last jam. So uh, Jackie Oja is going to have a full 30 second power jam here in this jam. The other thing though, Bulldog, is you'll notice the, the lineup for Pueblo has shifted in this next jam and uh, you're not staring down Jamie Fox you up and uh, the big Kapowski as well. So uh, hopefully another op point scoring opportunity for ICT in this jam. Jackie Oja weaving back and forth, shakes off Nitro Gen and gets around Mother Trucka of Pueblo and now is lead jammer. So good start for ICT in this power jam. Run, well, Jackie Oja rams into Strawberry Sour, gets knocked down to the infield. This is the first scoring pass and Alia Biz, Ala Inya Biz, jamming for Pueblo, comes out of the penalty box. End of the power jam, but Jackie Oja a lap ahead. Alainia Biz jumps between her teammates, gets around Seymour Skin to complete her initial pass. So Jackie Oja now puts on the afterburners, gets past Harley Innocent, just barely completes the pass, calls off the jam for, there it is, five points. So they got up to 12 points against Pueblo's 43, but a nice couple of jams for ICT. ICT rallying that score again, 12 to 43, 21 minutes left here in the first half. Uh, we apologize, viewers. All of that trouble with the uh, official scoreboard has caused our overlay to, uh, to not exist, and uh, rather than reboot the computer and bring that back up, uh, we will just be giving you uh, scores, and we'll hopefully have some time at halftime to restart that so you'll have it back again. We'll keep you updated uh, the old-fashioned way, as it were. But right now we have the number 11 dog pile jamming for ICT in the red. And I believe that is uh, Billy... Yes, Billy Foul Play jamming for Pueblo in the black. Billy Foul Play, a very energetic skater, and scrambling through the pack, using whatever she can get her hands on that's, that's black in color. You got uh, Meaning jerseys, of course. But uh, gets out for... I don't know where that came from. Lead jammer for Billy Foul Play. Uh, Dogpile getting out of the pack. About a half a lap behind, though. Billy Fowlplay's got plenty of time to get through. Gets up to the front. Beatrix beat down. Is the only skater she can't get past. So, and she, but she calls it off. Dogpile can't get in, and it's three points. No, Dogpile gets in for one. Just barely nipping it off the back of the pack. So three to one jam. But Pueblo coming out plus two. ICT picking some strange fruit off of Billy Foul Play, picking up one point while not lead jammer. Uh, seeing some hustle from the jammers to put on that pressure for the call off, but also to uh, garner themselves some points. Uh, ICT right now uh, with one blocker in the penalty box. Uh, number one, one, uh, no, number 16, Annika Sorenslam. So four on three pack advantage for Pueblo. The clock ticks under less than 20 minutes in the first half. Ring, no, it's Frigid Air jamming number 21 against Bomb Run Brit who just gets out first. Frigid Air was, was thrown back by, I swear I knew that that was, is that Pooter Smacker, B1? Yeah, I think so. Correct. A, a referee <laughs> just is standing directly in front of the pack right now. It's a standstill. <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, but we've got uh, Frigid Air going to get two. And Bomb Run, well, I see two for two and two. Both teams getting two. Bomb Run, Brit gets in, but Frigid Air able to match those two. 14 to 48. The clock ticks just under 19 minutes at the end of the jam. 
Mayday, uh, mayhem is taking place up here at the ranch, the Larimer County Fairgrounds. Check out treventscomplex.com for a complete list of upcoming events here at the ranch. And the mayhem is going on for one more day, folks. Jackie O'Jaw races through the pack and gets out for lead jammer. Ringo Scar, the team captain, and jammer for Pueblo, not far behind. Only about six or seven strides, not even a quarter lap behind. Jackie O'Jaw hits the pack, dodges around Strawberry Sour, who is trailing the pack, calls it off quickly. Ringo Scar's not going to get in. And is that four? Yes. All right. It looks like four fingers. Scoreboard, there he goes. Scoreboard ticks up to 18 for ICT. So now only trailing by 30 from behind the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls. 18 minutes remaining in the half. Great track awareness right now. ICT two lead jammer status is in a row. I am hoping that I spy with my little eye a bit of a catch-up run. Well, we're always hoping for that. Win by one point in overtime. That's what we're always rooting for, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> one point in overtime. I love that. Dogpile gets a back block penalty, and that gives a power jam to Ala in your biz. She's going to get lead jammer as well. So a power jam for Pueblo, and Ala Inyabiz is lead jammer. All, it's a four on four in the pack, though, so Ala Inyabiz runs into some traffic. And Ala Inyabiz out to the outside on this power jam. This is the second power jam that Dogpile has actually given up here in the first half of the game. Ala Inyabiz taking another swing at it as uh, Pueblo decides to show us how we inactively make sausage. But managing to penalty kill for uh, Dogpile to come back is that ICT defense only allowing four points on that power play. And Dogpile back in. Ale Inyabiz comes in for a second scoring pass. Calls off the jam though. And I see a multiplayer block being called. And of course, no points for Dog Pal. She can't. She opted to come back in in front of the pack, and therefore had to go all the way around. So she was only on her initial pass. 53-18 right now. The gap between these two teams is 35 points. 16 minutes and 25 seconds ticking down on that first period clock. That's a. Is that fridge? No, it's not. It's a. Billy foul played. Oh, in the penalty box. That's uh, number 16, 23, Jack uh, Fox. J Jamie Fox, you up. <laughs> I was trying to remember the name of that actor. Uh, <laughs> bomb Run Brit. J bomb Run Brit, the jammer for ICT, gets out for lead jammer. Scott Landa hit, goes to the penalty box. So both teams down, one blocker. Billy foul play completing her initial pass for Pueblo just before Bomb Run Brit gets into the pack on a scoring pass. The big Kapowski. Just muscles her out with her, with a discreetly placed back block. Three points for bomb run Brit of ICT as she calls off the jam. The other important thing to note here, three jams we've now gone with ICT being the only team putting points up on the scoreboard. That scoreboard shows that 21-53 uh, now, 32 points between these two teams. 15 minutes left in the first half, so reaching the halfway point of Period number one. Jackie O'Jaw jamming for ICT in the red against this is Frigidaire in the black for Pueblo. Frigidaire behind a two wall. Now the Pooter Smacker gets shunted out, out of the way. But Frigidaire forced out of bounds. She has to recycle to the back of the pack as Jackie O'Jaw of ICT gets out with lead jammer. Both leagues have held a lead jammer status six times apiece in this first half. Jackie O'Jaw on a scoring pass, and uh, here comes Frigidaire approaching. Jackie O'Jaw is going to call it off in time over the fallen corpse of Mother Trucka. She's going to get, oh, uh, I can't see because it's sideways, but it's four points. Yes, thank you. Four points for ICT. Four points for ICT, edges their score up 25 to Pueblo's 53. The uh, percentage lead held by both these teams, again, they are tied 
holding that. But uh, Pueblo, uh, their score speaking volumes on those uh, on that power jam advantage they had earlier. Their power points are at 20, while ICT has only put two points on the board during a power jam situation, Bulldog. Ringo Scar runs up to a three wall, but quickly shunts it aside and run and gets one on one with Annika Soren Slam and defeats her coming around turn two. She is lead jammer. Dogpile getting out of the pack as well, but the Ringo Scar with a healthy lead, half a lap. Ringo Scar just uh, gets shunted out by Seymour Skin. Calls off the jam, and I don't think any point, no points at all. So nice defensive work by ICT. Actually, great defensive work there by Seymour Skin. She actually turned to face the infield, therefore not allowing her hips to be anywhere where the jammer could get in front of them as she was sliding out of bounds and hopefully pick up a point even as she's calling off the jam. 53-25, score unchanged, 13-13 on that period clock. Now we've got Bomb Run Brit. We're seeing a pattern here. Dogpile, Jackie O'Jaw, and Bomb Run Brit, the jammers for ICT. And it looks like Bob Pueblo doing a four jammer rotation. Now we've got Ala Inya Biz. Gets out for lead jammer. Bomb Run Brit clobbered by a shoulder from Nitro Gen. Has to scrape herself off the floor and gets knocked out of bounds. Once again, Nitro Gen doing the honors. Ala Inya Biz, the jammer for Pueblo, getting in and weaving. Just doing a slow. Nope. No, she, they let her go by because she was heading to the penalty box. Forearm penalty on Ala Inya Biz of Pueblo. That means it's a power jam for Bomb Run Brit of ICT, who is still on her initial pass, though. But nice work by Rachel Rage. She didn't actually make contact with the big Kapowski, but got in front of her and essentially picked her off, allowing Bomb Run Brit a free path. So now she's on her first scoring pass for ICT. And immediately Pueblo picks up the speed of the pack. But bomb run, Britt ricochets off of a shoulder check from Jamie Fox, you up, but stays in bounds. Heading out, she's got a grand slam, but that's the end of the power jam. Bala Inya Biz out of the pack. And now on her first scoring pass, she was on a scoring pass when she got in. She was also lead jammer, so we are going to go the full two minutes. Still 30 seconds remaining, just over 30 seconds remaining in the jam. Bomb run, Britt on her second scoring pass. Ala Inya Biz on her first. Ala Inya Biz gets up to the front, finding a two wall there. Now a three wall as Seymour Skins comes up to join Beatrix Beatdown and Rachel Rage. Ala Inya Biz goes out briefly, but Beatrix Beatdown unable to get behind her. And Ala Inya Biz completing the pass for five. She was already in, in Grand Slam position when she started her scoring pass before she went to the penalty box. But Bomb Run Britt also getting a Grand Slam because she started that, that scoring pass before Ala Inya Biz got it got out of the penalty box. But that ends the jam. It's it, well, I don't see any score on the scoreboard yet for Pueblo. That's correct. While we're waiting for that scoreboard to update, a uh, great job by ICT during that power play that we saw in that last jam. Uh, they looked like they were going to uh, play the passive offense by stopping it, and then all of a sudden running forward as their jammer approaches the pack. It's a great way to kind of lull the other team into a sense of, oh, we're just going to stand here and batter on the jammer. And all of a sudden they have to be moved forward, and the jammer just gets to go through. 11-7 to seven in favor of ICT in that last jam. Um, score now 60 to 36 with Pueblo on top with 10 minutes left in the half. Billy foul play jamming for Pueblo gets around the outside. Fairly clear path opened up by her blockers and she gets lead jammer. Jackie O'Jaw jamming for ICT up front still on her initial pass behind a two wall. It looks like Havoc her way going to the penalty box for Pueblo that drops them down to three blockers. ICT still at full strength as Billy foul play on a scoring pass runs into a three wall now a two wall as as Pooter Smacker drops back to Bridge. Now Foxy Mahler drops back, and Rachel Rage going to the box on an out-of-play call. So she was a little too far ahead to the referee's liking, or they split up past that 20-foot mark. Billy Foulplay gets the grand slam, now comes in for a second scoring pass. Jackie O'Jaw got out, but not going to get around in time. Two more points for Billy Foulplay, giving him seven points for the jam. Brings him to 67 it's 36 for ICT as we drop below 10 minutes. Look at us. We got the scoreboard back, Bulldog. Hey. Technology. We love it.
<laughs> we actually love that we are able to provide such a great broadcasting experience for you free of charge. However, please, we are running three broadcast teams this weekend between two tournaments and 49 games. We've got a Donate Now button uh, just below your game screen. If you would like to pass us a few bucks, that would be great to help defray our costs uh, putting this together here on Colorado Sports TV. Back to the action. Jackie Ojal in frigid air. Almost tie run. The referees say Jackie Ojal just won, but it couldn't have been by much more than the thickness of her jammer cap. But she is lead jammer, and that's enough. And that's interesting. Ja Jamie Fox, you up, just gave a big whip to her jammer. But and I don't see anyone calling an out of play assist on that. So uh, maybe no one saw it but us. Maybe no one saw it but us. Well, maybe, but that was... <laughs> ICT racing that pack to keep the uh, the Pueblo, Pueblo's jammer out of a scoring range. 3 nothing in that last jam. Brings the score now 67-39 to 39 with uh, just over eight minutes on that game clock. Yeah, that, that is still uh, illegal if you're out of play to assist your jammer, right? I'm making the flinchy face because I am <laughs> unsure and do not want to commit right now, yeah. Bulldog. Now and I'm I have a fear of the C word sometimes. And now I'm full of self-doubt. But we've got Seymour Skins going to the penalty box. Ringo Starr taking advantage of that brief opening. Gets around Beatrix beat down to get lead jammer for Pueblo. Pueblo at, at full strength. ICT down one blocker. And there she is. Dog pile jamming for... Uh, Oh, excuse me, Pooter Smacker, Pooter Smacker, new jammer for ICT. That's why I was saying, no, that's Pooter Smacker. She's not jamming. She's a blocker. She's a fantastic blocker. But no, now she is. <laughs> she did a power slide, rock slide, and keeping one wheel out of bounds in order to avoid a cutting the track. So uh, <laughs> nice work by Pooter Smacker. But she's still on her initial pass. Counter checks pleasurable pain down to the track, but gets caught at the front. That's a... Number 75, Nitrogen, knocking her out of bounds. But Nitrogen gets knocked down by a returning Seymour Skins. But there goes Ringo Scar, the jammer for Pueblo, getting her second Grand Slam in all of the confusion. I don't think anyone, even any of the other skaters even saw her, friend or foe. But Pooter Smacker on her initial pass, still trying to get through the three wall. Nitrogen, the big Kapowski, and, uh, and Jamie Fox you up. As Ringo Scar once again undetected, in stealth mode, gets a grand slam, number three. Annika Soren slam in the box now for 30 seconds, pivot for ICT, and I am seeing a cut being thrown on. Looks like uh, Pooter Smacker headed to the penalty box on a track cut. Definitely a game changer, even now with 20 points up on the board for Ringo Scar, and now a power jam for Pueblo Bulldog. Ringo Scar gets around Seymour Skins and Scott Landa hit again. Is this. Was that scoring pass number five or number six? I, <laughs> I believe that was scoring pass number five. 25 points uh, for. Ringo Scar in that last jam. Ringo Scar actually putting up 44 of the 92 points that you see up on the Pueblo scoreboard. Uh, definitely the high scoring jammer uh, for Pueblo in this game. 92 39, five and a half minutes left in the first half. Uh, yes, that was a 25 point jam by Ringo Scar. And there goes Ala Inya Biz getting lead jammer very quickly. Of course, uh, Pueblo still on the power jam. Pooter Smacker, number B1, still standing now and returning to the track. So, ring, so Ala Inyabiz is going to get one, is going to get halfway through one scoring pass and the power jam ends. But she powers through, gets past Foxy Mahler and Dogpile to complete the pass for Grand Slam. Pooter Smacker now on her initial pass. Runs into a crowd of skaters, rips the, the helmet cover off. And hands it to the pivot dog pile who forges ahead, gets up the inside, and completes her initial pass. So now the scorer for ICT is dog pile. Ala Inyabiz, though, just steps past one blocker, takes the point, calls it off. Six points for Pueblo, brings them to 98. 
98 to 39, now 59 points separating these two teams. Uh, so the uh, star pass, we had a nice little textbook star pass happen in that last game. I've noticed, Bulldog, actually with our men's games uh, here at Mayday Mayhem, that the uh, star pass update has not quite reached them yet in their realm. Uh, seeing a lot of men uh, trying to slide the helmet cover onto their helmets while still in the pack uh, following the old rule. Uh, the women, of course, uh, taking it the... Uh, slightly more exciting route and uh, racing out of the pack before putting the helmet cover on. But of course they still can only score points with the helmet cover on. So, but but if you're in your initial pass there's really no and you've passed the star there's really no reason to bother trying to coordinate that uh, helmet cover onto your helmet. So we're trying to wrestle it and while you're being buffeted from all sides by your opponents. Billy foul play putting two three on the board, score uh, taking them over the century mark, 101 to 39. And we've got uh, just over three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Uh, RD Nation, a smart way to derby, uh, bringing roller derby to the masses. RD Nation helps leagues manage themselves better so they can stay, skate more. Download the free software at rdnation.com. Frigid Air, number T21, jamming against Bomb Run Brit, number B52. For ICT. ICT in the red, Pueblo in the black, and Frigid Air squeezing past Scott Land ahead of ICT to get lead jammer. Bomb run Brit counter checking Nitrogen off the track. Gets quickly up to the front on the inside lane to get caught by Jamie Fox, you up, who's inverted, but gets shunted aside. I said that too many times. <laughs> but Nitrogen trying to reel her back in. Bomb run Brit out racing her, gets out of her initial pass. But Frigidaire on a scoring pass, clears Rachel Rage out of her way. Moves in into a three wall of ICT blockers. Trying to get through, but Bomb Run Brit is there and now starting a scoring pass. I think she's going to put some points on the board. She is going to get two, so Frigidaire with four points. But Bomb Run Brit catching the pack and slicing two. ICT still managing to put on a bit of the pressure. Uh, they've roughly got a doubled score look to look at here, but uh, I think if ICT can uh, kind of match what they're doing on defense when there's a power play with what they're doing on defense when there's not a power play, I think you'll see them uh, start uh, eking up in the ranks for the scoreboard, Bulldog. 105 to 41 with under two minutes in the game. Or sorry, in the first half. Ringo Scar gets out first for lead jammer. Dog pile number 11 for ICT right behind <laughs> Ringo Scar. Easily sees her coming. Dog pile was not trying to be stealthy. So scoreless jam. We're going to start this next jam with just about, about one minute and one second remaining in the first half. Score 105 to 41. Pueblo. Both of these teams uh, still in place uh, to place at this tournament. We will run everybody out to the very end uh, from here on out. Uh, uh, both teams fighting for the opportunity to eventually place. Seventh, seventh being the highest that they would be able to place in this tournament. I apologize, I was counting there. <laughs> On her fingers, I should add, even though you couldn't see it. But yeah, I swear, well, she was counting on her fingers. Touch math, it works for me, Bulldog. <laughs> Ala Inyabiz completing a scoring pass for a grand slam. Jackie Oja going to get cut off by the lead jammer. There's still time on the clock, but uh, there's going to be a... But we're only going to have another jam if someone calls a timeout. No one has moved to call a timeout yet. Folks just lining up on the track with five seconds remaining in the period. I don't know if they're all just going to stand there and wait for the 30 seconds to run out. That sounds like it. And our boss lady has uh, blown the whistle. That, folks, is the end of the first half with uh, the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls on top. 110 to the ICT Roller Girls, 41. 
Bulldog, really what we're seeing here is, you know, Pueblo, they participated in the May Day Mayhem before. They're used to this weird scheduling where maybe you'll have to wait six hours between your game or maybe you'll turn around and play again uh, in three hours. Uh, definitely showing their prowess with that. Pueblo has always been uh, one of Colorado's uh, harder hitting kind of brutal defensive teams. They're showing that here as well. And the other thing that I'm noticing with Pueblo, and this is what surprises me considering their record coming into this game, is that Pueblo actually plays on a shellacked, really slick track down at the Colorado State Fairgrounds. And I would have thought that would have put them at more of an advantage here at the Mayday Mayhem where these nice, shiny, polished concrete floors have been the bane of most skaters' existence. Well, an another thing to point out is that ICT is playing with only about half of their roster. Uh, they don't have a full roster. They have a lot of skaters who could not make it. Uh, and in fact, uh, at the pr at the previous game, they asked for a shout out to the subjugator who was severely injured recently. Uh, tore out most of the soft tissue in her knee in a nasty fall where someone actually fell on top of her afterwards. And uh, you know, she so she she she's staying home. She's out till next season, but ICT wanted to send a lot of love her way. That's good. Subjugator, do what your doctor tells you so that I can watch you play someday, okay? So, so don't, don't uh, get all crazy and try to get back up on that knee before the doctor says you are allowed. Uh, so, yes, uh, we're headed into halftime. It's a short halftime, folks. We've got about three minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the half. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and sign off, uh, take a little stretcher, and uh, be back for more here on Colorado Sports. Dot TV. short halftime for this uh, that's because of the scoreboard malfunction that, which put us a little bit behind so a short halftime for these teams uh, Ms. C's got, had an unexpected emergency come up but she should be back shortly within the next few minutes she had to go deal with an emergency on the other track uh, but she will be back trust me I'm Bulldog and uh, right now we have the second half coming up for the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls versus ICT Roller Girls ICT from Wichita Kansas it's uh, ICT is the airport code for Kansas. Kansas in the red, Pueblo, Derby Devil Dolls in the black. But right now at halftime, we've got a score of 110 for Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls to 41 points for ICT Roller Girls. So Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls coming out very far ahead in the first half. ICT looking to catch up. First jammers on the line. Billy foul play, number 1936, jamming for Pueblo in the black jerseys against dog pile number 11 in the red jersey for ICT, a.k.a. Kansas. Billy foul play up to the front. She's got a three wall to deal with. Gets caught by Rachel Rage as dog pile races around, gets lead jammer. Takes it away from Billy Foul Play, but now Billy Foul Play getting between Hooter Smacker and Rachel Rage of Kansas and getting out, completing her initial pass. But Dogpile dives in, calls off the jam with plenty of time. Billy Foul Play only didn't get within a quarter lap of the pack, but two points, no, three points, three points for ICT. Brings them to 41 points. And Ms. C, did you get that emergency taken care of? Yes. All of the puppies are safe, and all of the kittens are not up in trees. That's what I do on restroom breaks, Bulldog. You mean the emergency on the other track, yes. Yes, the, the lady doth, doth protesteth too much about five-minute halftimes. 
<laughs> but now we've got we've got bomb run Britt facing off against Frigid Air for Pueblo. Frigid Air forced out of bounds by Scott Land to hit, but she went out herself, allowing Frigid Air to come back in easy. The easy way. Bomb run Britt though getting lead jammer. Frigid Air get now getting coming out of the pack. But just uh, narrowing the gap. And she started out about half a lap behind. Now only about a little over a quarter lap behind. The bomb run Brits going to get almost all the way through the pack. Three points for ICT. She calls it off. We're definitely seeing that uh, score efficiency coming into play. In the first half, we had a lead jammer percentage of 63% for Pueblo. And so, it, and, and roughly, 63%. More score, 110 to 47. I'm sure that that math figures out somewhere. <laughs> so far. In, in my brain, it does. So far, two jams go ICT's way. Six points total. Seymour Skins gives a glancing hip check to Ringo Scar, but she, Ringo Scar gets past Foxy Mahler and get, get, now is lead jammer. We've got Jackie O'Jaw at the front of Forced out of bounds. Oh. Forced out of bounds by the big Kapowski, but the big Kapowski cleared out of the way with a vengeance. I believe that was Rachel Rage, but it was all a blur, and there was a, and there was a referee standing in the way. We've got Jackie O'Jaw, though, now completing her initial pass. Ringo Scar already has a green, uh, a grand slam. Second scoring pass, just brushes off a shoulder from Seymour Skins, gets around Rachel Rage. Doesn't get past Foxy Mahler, but calls it off before Jackie O'Jaw can get in. So eight points total for Pueblo in that jam. 118 to 47, now 26 minutes left in the half. Or sorry, the game. Same thing. <laughs> Indeed, that is true. That is very, very true. Other things that are true is that uh, producing this weekend for you is not cheap even though we give it to you free, please click on that donate button now. I suggest five bucks a day for your watching pleasure in donations. Bulldog. Dog pile number 11, jamming for ICT against number 133, Ala Inya Biz for Pueblo. Ala Inya Biz pirouettes around the front guard of ICT, gets out for lead jammer. Dog pile gets, pa gets past Jamie Fox you up. And only about five strides or five or six strides behind Ala Inya Biz. It's Ala Inya Biz with a big smile on her face. She's enjoying the game, I think, but uh, calls off the jam. But also, I think a little bit of good sportsmanship there, too. Everything all in good fun. I, I do know from actually announcing for a league who has who has lost at this this sort of a rate uh, to Pueblo before um, that Pueblo always gracious hosts. And uh, never very, uh, well, let's say, let's just say they follow the number one rule of roller derby in how they treat the folks who play them regardless of what the score is at the end. Indeed. Uh, Billy Fowl play jamming for Pueblo against Bomb Run Brit. Both jammers neck and neck right next to each other uh, facing uh, com competing opponent blockers. They were just, uh, well, briefly, they were just kind of a, in a checkerboard pattern, but uh, Bomb Run Brit winning the battle gets out first. She is lead jammer. Little help from Annika Soren Slam and Scott Landa hit. B Billy Foul play trying to get around Foxy Mahler and gets the free pass at the end of the engagement zone. She's free, but now Bomb Run Brit hits the pack on her first scoring pass, slams a shoulder into Mother Trucka. It calls off the jam, three points for ICT. That brings them to 50 points. Pueblo remains at 118. Scott Landa hit, uh, definitely key in that last jam to uh, allowing Bomb Run Brit to become lead jammer. Uh, she was almost single-handedly containing Billy Foul play, no matter where Billy was in the pack, uh, also with her other blockers coming in to back her up. But certainly whenever I was looking up at that last jam, I saw Scott Landa hit in front of Billy Holiday. Frigid Air has no trouble getting up the inside lane. She's lead jammer now. Jackie O'Jaw behind a two wall. Jamie Fox, you up. And Mother Trucka, but Mother Trucka waved off to the penalty box. Jamie Fox, you up, slows her down briefly and also going to the penalty box. I believe both skaters getting a out of play call. So that drops Pueblo down to two blockers. But Frigid Air doesn't mind. She gets up the outside 
No problem. Doesn't even need any help from her teammates. Just a sneak attack. She's going to get a four. One, two, three, four. There it is. Four points brings him to 122 points. ICT at 50. She also apparently became a jam ref at the end of that jam after that pass all the way through the pack by herself. <laughs> well, at least her score matched the one that Rockety put up that time. <laughs> 4-0 uh, on that last jam score now 122 to 50 23 minutes ticking down on that game clock Ringo Scar jamming for Pueblo in the black a four wall of ICT but Booter Smacker torn around <laughs> torn around that warps the wall Ringo Scar is going to get through but Dogpile got out first she's lead jammer now but uh, oh, about a quarter lap behind uh, or sorry ahead of Ringo Scar Dogpile just just forces Harley Innocent aside and just dodges the big Kapowski who is fully committed on that block, I might say. I might add. Uh, she actually lands face first when she missed. So nice effort by the big Kapowski, but to not quite enough. It's four points for ICT. Four nothing in that last jam. Uh, ICT actually up one point here in the second half. They have scored 13 to Pueblo's 12 points in this second half. Bomb run, Britt jamming for ICT. Ala Inyabiz whips herself off of Havoc her way, screams around the track, but gets caught by Annika Sorenslam, just barely tight, walking the tightrope on the outside lane, lands on her stomach, but picks herself back up and finds she's lead jammer, and there's that big smile on number 133's face, almost going out of bounds, just in her <laughs> enthusiasm. Great work by Dogpile, ca almost catching up to her. Or sorry, that was Bomb Run Brit, almost catching up to her and forcing the call off, and it's a scoreless jam. I love it when jammers very visibly enjoy what they are doing on the track. It makes it so much more fun uh, than just the why so serious expression that so many of them tend to get because they're focusing really hard on the game. Uh, the score unchanged, uh, just the clock changing, 21 minutes left in the game. Jackie O'Jaw facing off against Billy Foulplay. Jackie O'Jaw in the red for ICT. Stumbles her teammate Seymour Skin falling over. Picks herself back up, but finds she's at the back of the pack. Billy Foulplay, the jammer for Pueblo up front, facing a three wall. A big hip check, double hip checks from Annika Orange Lamb and Scott Land to hit her. Unable to get Billy Foulplay out of bounds. She comes out lead jammer and now catches up to Jackie O'Jar, who's way at the back of the pack. Now moves up the inside lane around her teammates. Uh, the big Kapowski runs into a three wall knocked down. Jackie O'Jar trying to follow her, but the big Kapowski is not going to let that happen. She gets recycled back behind Harley Innocent. And the, now the Pueblo jammer, uh, Billy Foulplay, completing her pass. Grand slam. But there goes Jackie O'Jaw, this time out racing Harley Innocent around the outside lane, completing her initial pass. She was helped by the fact that two of the Pueblo blockers are in the penalty box. Billy Foulplay, though, just brushes aside, counter checks a hip check from Annika Soar and Slam, and gets around Scotland to hit without a touch. Calls it off for four more, a total of nine points for Pueblo. ICT Roll Girls, uh, Jackie O'Jaw not able to get in. Score in that last jam, nine to zero in Pueblo's favor. Score 131 to 54. It's been a uh, semi-clean second half here with only uh, Strawberry Sour it caged in the penalty box right now as the next jam is in play with Dogpile. Pulling out in front, number 11 for the ladies in red. She's lead jammer against Frigidaire. Frigidaire still in the in the pack, just rides out Rachel Rage and gets past the front guard, Pooter Smacker and Beatrix Beatdown, completing her initial pass. But Dogpile making short work of the pack, calls it off for four for ICT. 4-0 in that last jam for ICT. Penalty box empty right now. We'll play a little five on five for the time being. Nineteen minutes left in the game. ICT trailing by quite a bit, fifty-eight to one hundred thirty-one. They're gonna, they're going to feed. 
In a field bomb run, Britt V52 who finds the outside lane, out races Jamie Foxy up. Jamie Foxy up saw her, but bomb run, Britt had too much speed. She couldn't catch her. She's lead jammer. But Ringo Scar, team captain for Pueblo, just gets past Scott Landa hit and Foxy Mahler. And now it's out to the races. We've got bomb run, Britt trying to catch up to the pack that's picked up speed. Ringo Scar closing the gap, though, ever so slowly. Bomb run, Britt on a scoring pass, but Pueblo's not going to let her get in front of only go. Oh, she is going to get one. One point for bomb run, Britt, but the pack really sped up. Nice work by Pueblo, forcing her hand. She's got to call it off, and Ringo Scar for catching up and keeping the pressure on. You know, ICT actually speeding up that pack, uh, trying to uh, garner some more points for their jammer. Uh, very interesting to me that it, it seems that whenever I talk about pack speed, ICT is usually behind the pack pushing it forward. Very obviously. I don't know if Pueblo likes to play it slow and deliberate. Perhaps they prefer a little chess and ICT preferring a race. Oh, uh, well, now, right now, Ala Inya Biz counter checking Scott Land a hit and gets out with a little help from Harley Innocent, who's clearing a little the front guard out of the way. We've got uh, Jackie Ojaw now getting out for ICT. But Ala Inya Biz well in the lead. Now, starting a scoring pass, gets around Seymour Skins, rams into Scott Land a hit. That sends her ricocheting out of bounds, but she calls off the jam. She does get four points for Pueblo. Did you see that? She got up from that hit giggling, Bulldog. <laughs> now, I mean, I, I know we neither of us are, are skaters who receive hits, but I sure as heck wouldn't get up giggling after being slammed onto the floor. Uh, just, it's uh, refreshing sometimes, as I said before, with so many people taking it a little too seriously for, for my taste, to see someone just outwardly having a great time out on the track. <laughs> Now we've got dog pile number 11 going one on one with Jamie Foxy up quickly up to the front. Now Mother Trucker making it a two wall, but dog pile jukes to the inside, gets free. Billy Foul play the jammer for Pueblo, still in the pack facing three blockers, gets hit by with a shoulder from Annika Soren slam, but keeps going forward, knocks down Rachel Rage and dodges around a uh, fallen Beatrix beat down to complete her initial pass just before dog pile gets into the pack. Dogpile steps in, gets all four points. The big Kapowski a little slow getting up. I was a little worried. Maybe her arm was hurt, but no, I think she was just kind of wincing, but otherwise unharmed. That's a blocker for Pueblo. Uh, Indeed. Uh, Pueblo uh, doing a start off of the pivot line. Um, we saw this a lot from them, actually, last year at Mayday Mayhem, before anybody else was really uh, bringing the pivot line back. Uh, sometimes they use it as a way to force, a, force the other team to get off of the jammer line and spring their jammer free. But in either way, shape, or form with that strategy, it didn't work because Bomb Run Brit is your lead jammer against Frigidaire. Showing some speed. The ICT jammer racing away. She's lead jammer. Frigid Air up front, shakes off a shoulder from Rachel Rage and gets around Pooter Smacker and Foxy Mahler to complete her initial pass. But Bomb Run Britt on a scoring pass for ICT. The big Kapowski staying in front of her. She's only, they're only going to give up two points. Bomb Run Britt calling it off. Two points for Bomb Run Britt in that last jam. Score now 65-135 with 15 minutes remaining in the game. Um, Bomb Run Britt, actually uh, the high-scoring jammer for ICT. She's picked up 34 of those 65 points. So over half of their points uh, belong to Bomb Run Britt, finding a little more uh, efficiency against the Pueblo defense. Jackie O'Jaw around the outside. Ringo Scar now catching up. Jackie O'Jaw forced back to the rear of the pack. Strawberry Sour and Harley Innocent double teaming her now. But a quick move up the inside, but she rams into pleasurable, no, the Mother Trucka. Mother Trucka now, oh, that wasn't Mother Trucka, that was uh, Strawberry Sour colliding with Jackie O'Jaw. Both skaters going down, but Strawberry Sour to the penalty box. But damage done, Jackie O'Jaw at the back of the pack. Harley Innocent clears out Jackie O'Jaw, but she gets cleared up by Pooter Smacker, but a back block called on Pooter Smacker. So that drops uh, ICT down to three blockers, but Pueblo down two blockers, or down two two blockers, and they're 
symmetric, isn't it? <laughs> Ringo Starr getting four points, though, in the aftermath, in all the chaos. Ringo Starr, Scar able to get in. Now it's Pueblo 139, ICT at 65. Ringo Scar also a uh, staple of Pueblo's uh, jam line. Uh, I do believe... Mm, if she doesn't go all the way back to the beginning, she's pretty darn close. Uh, a lot of uh, founding team members here. ICT uh, has met Pueblo before in play. That time ICT came out ahead, and that Pueblo team essentially unchanged since then. Uh, so uh, the gameplay that we're seeing out here is... Uh, Rather interesting to note, uh, Dogpile out in front. She is lead jammer against uh, Ala Inubiz. Dogpile weaving straight through the pack. Only run, only has a little bit of trouble with Jamie Fox who up before she gets out for a grand slam. Ring uh, Ala Inubiz now completing her initial pass after a little parting shoulder check from Rachel Rage, but Dogpile rams into the pack. Hip checks Mother Trucka down to the ground, collapsing herself. Calls off the jam from the ground. Three more points. That's going to be eight points for ICT. Five nothing in that last jam. Oh, sorry, eight nothing in that last jam. I apologize to those at home. Uh, 73 139. The score in the second half, though, Bulldog, 32 to 29. ICT actually ahead in second half points. Uh, by three points. Bomb run, Britt jamming for ICT in the red. Billy foul play for Pueblo in the black. It's forced out of bounds by Beatrix Beatdown, who follows her out. Bomb run, Britt also forced out, has to recycle. Billy foul play getting a, a cutting the track. There was one ICT blocker that managed to step behind her. No one noticed except for the referee. Well, you know, maybe someone else noticed. But certainly Billy Foulplay didn't notice. And obviously I didn't notice either because I waited until she called the thing. But here we go. Bomb run Brit on a power jam. Just barely avoids Jamie Fox you up. Nice work by Annika Soren Slam trying to clear out Jamie Fox you up. But actually missed, but good effort. I like to reward effort as well as effectiveness. You know. She gets a gold star. Oh, bomb run Brit. Gets, oh, about as close as you can get. She lands inbounds. The referee signaling, cutting the track. And uh, bomb run. That was about as close. She tried to collapse down, but before any other part of her body could touch down, her, her wheels went all the way inbounds. So that's about as technical a cut as you can get, about as close as you can possibly shave it. Uh, but Billy foul play. Now, ha she had completed her penalty, got in before bomb run Brit got to the well before she got into the penalty box, before she even left the track. So Billy foul play on a 30-second power jam. But a relentless Seymour Skins stretching the engagement zone as far as it will with a little help from her teammates bridging. But Billy foul play completing her first scoring pass. That's five points for Pueblo. And, of course, uh, Bomber and Britt was on a scoring pass, so she has some penalties, uh, some points in reserve. <laughs> But uh, Billy Foul Play is going to get through the second time, second Grand Slam. Ten points so far for Pueblo in the jam, but Bomb Run Britt back in action. Ramming repeatedly into Strawberry Sour, and referee's hand says two points for ICT. So it's 10-2 to two jam in favor of Pueblo. Great job uh, uh, by Seymour Skins and the ICT defense in that last jam. You see them dealing out a uh, track cut penalty to Billy foul play. What actually happened was Bomb Run Brit was hit by uh, number 69 Harley Innocent from Pueblo. Harley Innocent, while she was backing up to, uh, you know, try and force the cut on Bomb Run Brit, Seymour Skins had in the meantime hit Billy foul play out of bounds and she just sort of tootled on back along with Harley and uh, the trick worked. I believe that uh, that uh, Billy foul play was just like, oh yeah, yeah, the other jammer got hit out of bounds and that's what's happening there. Her defense going back to assist her. Great little uh, smoke and mirrors uh, thrown off by Seymour Skins in that last jam. We've got uh, an official review, I believe. Perhaps happening uh, by ICT. 
Oh, clock right now frozen at 10 minutes, 2 seconds remaining in the game. Pueblo at 149, ICT at 75, so a 74-point differential. Great defensive work also in that last jam uh, by ICT, uh, building bridges that do not lead to uh, destroyed packs. I don't know if you noticed, Bulldog, around... Uh, turn three opposite us, but it was almost as if they were using the lines on the track to exactly spread themselves out as they built their bridge. Uh, so uh, great uh, track awareness by I the ICT Roller Girls in that last jam. So between Seymour Skins and uh, the ICT defense uh, led to uh, some, some great pack work in that last jam, even though despite the score being 10-2 to 2 in Pueblo's favor. Sorry for the silence there, Bulldog. I was trying to hear uh, what that official review garnered for us in that last jam. I apologize, folks. Uh, yeah, I don't see any change in points or penalties. But right now, Jackie O'Jaw gets away from pleasurable pain and Nitro Gen to complete her initial pass and clinch lead jammer. Frigidaire sweeping between Scotland a hit and Foxy Mahler. <laughs> Foxy Mahler. Uh, blocker for ICT, but uh, you know what? Jackie Ojaw is going to pick up uh, uh, three points for ICT. Three points for ICT, zero for Pueblo in that last jam. Nine minutes ticking down on the game clock. Uh, total score right now, ICT 78, Pueblo 149. Jackie Ojaw responsible for 15 of those 78 points for the ICT Roller Girls. Uh, you notice we're running basically a uh, four jammer rotation for both of these teams. Ringo Scar jamming for Pueblo, runs into a four wall. We've got Annika Soren slam, Seymour skin, Rachel Rage, and Scott Landa hit, blocking, and they're holding her back, driving her all the way to the rear. She gets a little help from the big Kapowski to get up to the front, but dog pile number 11 jamming for ICD already out for lead jammer. Ringo Scar knocked out of bounds, gets recycled to the back, so Pueblo jammer still on her initial pass as dog pile, the ICD jammer, just slams into the rear guard of Pueblo, gets forced out of bounds briefly, and Jamie Fox, who up, draws the cut. It's going to be a power jam for Pueblo. She also loses lead jammer, so we will have a full two-minute jam. But Ringo Scar right now has free reign in the pack. A big hit from Annika Sorenslam, but Ringo Scar just shakes it off, barely even phased by it, and just brushes past the, past the rest of the ICT blockers. Grand slam for Pueblo. ICT building a brace at the top of the pack. Uh, of course, Pueblo hanging back. Uh, looking to disapprove of ICT silently from the back of the pack. As Dogpile back in from the penalty box, this power jam has ended. Ten points, though, put on the board by Ringo Scar during that power play. Ringo Scar was trying to call off the jam, but she was not lead jammer. Dogpile had already clinched that before she went to the penalty box. So we'll be, have a full jam, but Ringo Scar looking like she's taking her time. Maybe a little winded or maybe just confident because they still have a sizable lead. But Dogpile getting through, completing her first scoring pass, now on the second. But Ringo Scar still a full lap ahead. Ringo Scar on a third scoring pass, already with 10. Dogpile getting through. And uh, only going to get four. Ringo Scar gets four as well. So that's going to end up 14 points to 8 points for ICT. That brings Pueblo up to 163, ICT at 86 with under 7 minutes remaining. Pueblo losing one blocker to the penalty box at toward the end of that last jam. Uh, total score in that last jam, 14 to 8. Um, 14 points put on the board by Pueblo. Power points uh, belonging to Pueblo in this second half. Uh, six to ICT's four. Bomb run Brit jamming for ICT. Now up to the front one-on-one -on -one with Jamie Fox. You up. Jamie Fox you up tries to... Oh, but she gets a cutting the track. Bomb run Brit giving up a power jam. So Ala Inyabiz all on her own. Jamming for Pueblo. Races ahead. Gets a no pass, no penalty. So no lead jammer for her either. So we will have a full two-minute jam. 
Four on three in the pack. Nitro Gen standing in the penalty box. She'll be returning to for Pueblo soon, but they're on the power jam, so uh, she's now just a window dressing for the Pueblo team. <laughs> Ala Inya Biz getting around Rachel Rage. Four points. Oh, sorry, five points. Five points. That was a grand slam for Ala Inya Biz. Now second scoring pass. The, the pack has not moved from turn four. Ala Inya Biz getting shoved around by Pooter Smacker and uh, Beatrix Beatdown. Now dodges past Rachel Rage, completing the second scoring pass, second grand slam. And that's the end of the power jam. Bomb run Brit back in action. Gets forced out of bounds and still on her initial pass at the rear of the pack. Ala Inya Biz, the jammer for Pueblo, on scoring pass number three. Oh, gets right up to the edge but stays in bounds just barely. The outside pack ref gives the nod. Says, yeah, Ala Inya Biz came back in. Did, did not go out of bounds, so she was clean. Bomb run, Britt knocked down by a shoulder check from Harley, innocent, and gets another cutting the track. I think her left foot just touched down out of bounds when she fell down. And that uh, that's all it takes. Another technical penalty on ICT, another power jam for Pueblo. ICT losing an, a blocker to the penalty box as well on a track cut. It's number B1, Pooter Smacker, as uh, the natural conclusion of the jam happens. A little bit of straightening up on the uh, scoreboard for us here, so I'm going to hold off letting you know about that. We've got a team timeout being called for the ICT All-Stars. Second half play here, the score, uh, 177 to 86, 14 to nothing in that last jam in favor of Pueblo. Uh, Bomb Run Britt running into some penalty issues in that last jam. She'll be um, starting the jam in the penalty box. This will be a power start for Pueblo. Well, I, I think ICT uh, coach is talking to, they, this may be an official review, we don't have... Um, any official word, but he's talking. Ringo Scar, the captain for Pueblo, is also speaking, and it looked like it looked like the uh, the ICT coach was probably talking about bomb run Brit because he was he got down on his knees and made the same motion that you know st there he goes again, just tapping his foot out of bounds. And I think he's clarifying, uh, maybe trying to. Uh, spring his jammer a little bit early but bomb run brits already served most of her penalties so that won't help that much but it would actually if if he could spring her it would actually give them the opportunity to put in a fresh jammer billy foul play oh billy foul play <laughs> yeah you saw that i was like Jackie not O'Draw. time not time for a fresh jammer yet ict <laughs> uh just so uh the the crowd at home knows that uh, we are working on a three Timeouts still for Pueblo. Two timeouts now for ICT as they use their first timeout with four minutes left in the game. It's been a pretty smoothly smooth running game in spite of penalty box woes for both teams. Power start for Pueblo, but they're down one blocker. Three to two in the pack. And Beatrix beatdown has to give the free pass to Billy foul play. So lead jammer goes to Pueblo. Coming around for her first scoring pass. But there was a little line, a lineup for, for the penalty box. The big Kapowski trading places with a, with the Pueblo blocker as she came out of the penalty box. But now first scoring pass for Billy Foul play, but she gets knocked out of bounds as a recy recycle to the back. Bomb run Brit getting through the pack very quickly, completing her initial pass. But Billy foul play completing her scoring pass. Yeah, five points for uh, Billy foul play of Pueblo. Bring them to 186, exactly 100 points ahead of ICT. Pueblo's blockers uh, seeming to not be able to keep themselves out of the penalty box. I guess Pueblo resting on their laurels with the score up on the board uh, and, and not worrying too badly about that penalty trouble. Uh, but right now, Pueblo's uh, blocker chairs, both full, one blocker standing, and we've got a full complement of blockers out there for ICT. Beautiful move by Annika Soren Slam, and then a follow-up. She opens up that, uh, that outside lane wide, and then just as, ja as Jamie Foxy up tried to move into position, she cut her off 
and allowed free reign for Jackie O'Jaw, the jammer for ICT, to get through. Now on her first scoring pass and secured lead jammer, slams into Mother Trucka. And gonna get a low block. That's another power jam and another two minute jam. Pueblo now uh, on the scoring pass with Frigidaire in control. Frigidaire shoving the ICT line up to the top of the pack, but we've got an, a dis, I believe a destruction, maybe a failure to reform, probably failure to reform, uh, out of play call on a on a Seymour skins. Seymour skins from ICT. Frigidaire though still uh, working on now her second. Second scoring pass? Yes, second scoring pass for Pueblo. She goes ahead and restarts it behind the pack but uh, and tries to call off the jam, but she is, again, not lead jammer. Uh, we are going at the remaining 45 seconds of this jam. Jackie Ojaw removing the star cap, passing it to the pivot. Pooter Smacker, B1, but, the, but Pueblo instantly reacts, gets in front of her. But she is the official scorer now, but... Uh, Jackie Ojal was on a scoring pass when she went to the penalty box, so she should be completing a scoring pass now as the scorer for her team. Pootersmacker, oh, racing ahead, Big Kapowski comes in with a shoulder, gets in front of her. She's not going to let it go easily, but now runs out of room. Pootersmacker picking up four points, only four points. Uh, Jackie Ojal did not get a jammer point before she got sent to the penalty box, so that was... Uh, so did not get a lap point against Frigidaire. Frigidaire coming through on number three. Gets uh, two additional points. Three additional points. 13 points for Pueblo. Four points for ICT. Team timeout being called by the ICT Roller Girls. Uh, 199 to 90 is now the score. And we have less than a minute on the clock in this game. Pueblo going to go on in this game um, to compete for uh, seven, or for eighth place in the tournament, uh, ICT going to move down to the ninth, tenth place game. Uh, we're taking, we're going to take a look here. I'm just going to look at the uh, breakdown of scores here. Uh, we're seeing here in the second half, ICT scoring 52. Pueblo, though, putting up 89 of those 199 points here in the second half. Uh, their lead percentage here in the second half, 23, 23 percent. And 19% uh, for ICT. Actually, both of these teams uh, failing to garner the lead jammer status percentage. Uh, just so you know, my statistics of the lead percentage go down when the, the uh, uh, lead jammer is lost for the power jam. So only 23% of the time was lead jammer held effectively uh, by Pueblo uh, during, that, uh, during the second half. Power points for Pueblo in the second half. 78 of those 199 points put up there are uh, for power points. It's seven for the ICT Roller Girls in the second half. So uh, definitely power jams coming into play for lengthening that lead for Pueblo. Yeah, Pueblo definitely converting on the power jams. Uh, ICT has gotten four, four power jams, but has only managed to score in the neighborhood of seven points. So not even uh, two full scoring passes uh, for ICT in the uh, in the power jam spot, whereas uh, whereas Pueblo has scored nine power jams, 78 points, or in that neighborhood. Ringo Scar, as you see her on the screen, holding up two fingers. She actually picked up one point in that last jam. We'll see that reflected here in the official game scoreboard here shortly. ICT using their last time out to freeze the clock at 15 seconds, so we will have at least one more jam. Team timeout for ICT. There we go. There's the uh, one point that Pueblo picked up in that last jam, 200 to 92. We will have one last jam in this game. ICT want to taking it, wanting to take it all the way out. So we've got some even more free roller derby for you. Uh, 16 seconds on the clock, but we may go up to the full two minutes in the next jam. Make sure you stay tuned here on Colorado Sports TV. We will keep broadcasting the May Day Mayhem Tournament. Uh, coming up here at 4 o'clock, we will see a uh, game before, oh, which isn't filled out on my form. Before is going to be a men's play. We are going to see the uh, third place 
team from Pool 2, that would be the Dreadnoughts, take on the second place team from Pool 1, the Lane County Concussion, here on this track on Colorado Sports TV. A bomb run, Britt makes an end run around the outside, gets lead jammer. I'll let in your biz, number 133 for Pueblo, though, getting out of the pack as well. Strawberry Sour drops back to, to, to sap against the ICT jammer, but bomb run, Britt races through. Calls off the jam, does it in time, gets four points. So ICT ending on a high note, but coming up short, 200 points for Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls out of Pueblo, Colorado. And 96 points for ICT Roller Girls from Wichita, Kansas. We have now begun the seeding into our tournament. Uh, the next time that you will see you will see the ICT Roller Girls play is at tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 p.m. Mountain in the 9th. Oh, oh, wait, 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 sorry. They will play at 3 o'clock p.m. Mountain on track one tomorrow in the 9th, 10th place game. And Pueblo will be playing at... Eek. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at these very small numbers and trying to match it up on the schedule. They will also be playing at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon on Track 2, right here on Track 2 on Colorado Sports TV. They will be playing for 8th place against the winner of the West Texas and uh, Happy Valley game coming up shortly. And ICT, of course, will take on the loser of that game tomorrow afternoon. And now, folks, it is time to bring out the men. We've got the Dreadnoughts taking on on the Lane County Concussion, I believe. Oh, the Uinta Madness. And uh, yeah, keep it tuned in here to Colorado Sports TV. Make sure you're hitting that donate button for us uh, to help keep funding great roller derby broadcasting here in Colorado. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, Bulldog. And I'm, once again, Miscommunication. And uh, stay tuned for Uinta and the Dreadnoughts.